Today, we've got with us Taylor Dukes. You might know Taylor Dukes from her Instagram account, Taylor Dukes Wellness, or her website, taylordukeswellness.com. She is the co-founder of Restore and Revive Wellness Center. She is a functional medicine expert. She is such an amazing person. She's going to give us so much advice today about healthy and clean and toxic free living. And she's going to tell us about her journey, how she got into this space, how she became an expert in functional medicine. And then she is also going to give us an update on her health journey. Taylor was diagnosed with a brain tumor a few months ago. And as someone who really cares about health and integrative and functional medicine, she has a really unique perspective and a lot of wisdom and such godly encouragement for us today. I know that Relatable is going to love this episode. All of you Relatables and Related Bros out there, this one is going to be super popular because of the wisdom that she brings to the table. So without further ado, here is our friend Taylor Dukes. And this episode is brought to you by our friends at Good Ranchers. Go to GoodRanchers.com. Use promo code Allie at checkout. That's GoodRanchers.com. Code Allie. Thanks so much for joining us. For those who don't follow you, Taylor Dukes Wellness, who are you? What do you do? I am Taylor Dukes. I am a family nurse practitioner, and I have a functional medicine private practice and a wellness center in Fort Worth. And I wasn't always into wellness. I didn't grow up super healthy, but I got into this because I was sick and um, I love it. I love what I do. I get to help people and get to the root cause of their medical issues. Yeah. And it's the best. <laughs> I started following you because you post a lot about um, non-toxic or less toxic alternatives to maybe everyday products that we use. You post all kinds of tips if your kids are sick or if you're sick or things like that. So tell me a little bit uh, about your story, how you started kind of in this world. I don't want to call you an influencer because you're so much more than that. But online, you do influence a lot of people when it comes to wellness. So you talked about being sick. Um, so just tell us, how did you move into this world? Yeah. So the world of whether it's integrative, functional, holistic medicine, you know, there's a lot of different terms for it and certifications, but I always say that you either get into it because you're sick or you're just smart. And I was not smart. I was sick. And so I have a story mm -hmm. and I went to TCU undergrad nursing school, worked in trauma ICU, just typical nursing route. And, um, the Lord kind of called me overseas to do some medical mission stuff. And so I was living in Africa and then I went to Ecuador to start up some clinics and through kind of doing those medical mission trips, I got really sick mm. and um, I ended up having to get flown home from Ecuador. My mom kind of like moved in with me. I'm like this young professional that's supposed yeah. to be at the height of my life. And so you're like at 25 or yeah, I was like so. 23, probably 23. Okay. 23 so and super young still. Yeah, really yeah. young. And I wasn't the sick kid growing up. You know, I wasn't the kid with ear infections and strep throat. And yeah. I really, and I'm always like optimistic and kind of a power through kind of person, but like not able to get out of bed and debilitating joint pain. And my hair was falling out and it was just oh, all wow. these unexplainable symptoms. And so I was going to all these specialists and I was so convicted because I'm like, here I am a nurse in the medical field that's supposed to advocate for patients. And I didn't know how to advocate for myself, mm. you know, and I was going to the gastroenterologist and getting all these procedures and start this medication and then going to the endocrinologist and was on thyroid meds. And it just kind of felt like a rat race, you know, and I'm trying to like put the pieces of the puzzle together. And so no one really knew you were going to all these doctors and no one yeah. could tell you this is the diagnosis. This is what you have. Exactly. You're just kind of guessing. And it wasn't like I just had stomach symptoms. It was like my hair was falling Everything. out, but I had bad joint pain and it was just, it didn't make sense, honestly. Yeah. And so, um, my parents were like, gosh, this is not like you. We know our daughter. You're always, you've always been healthy. I've never been on medications, nothing. And so my mom sought out a functional medicine provider. And I was like, that is woo woo. That is hocus pocus. I don't believe in it. There's no research. That's not what I learned in nursing school. And come to find out it was an MD, you know, that was in Austin at the time. And she did this whole assessment, kind of started putting pieces of the puzzle together. Um, you know, and it was a series of things that led me to where I was. And I had parasites and just all kinds of crazy things from living abroad. And I was on long term antibiotics because I didn't want malaria. And so you just kind of see all these little pieces of the puzzle that started adding mm. up. And um, through her, I mean, truly by God's grace, I was under her care. She changed my life, not only personally in my health, but also the trajectory of my career yeah. and um, changed my diet, my lifestyle. I was able to get off 
meds, which I'm all for meds. I prescribe meds in my practice, but yeah. just meds that cover up symptoms. You yeah. know, people are like, well, maybe I'll take that for my headache. No one asks the why question. Yeah. Like, why are you having headaches? Why are you having stomach issues? Why are you having thyroid? And so truly she changed my life. And I was like, oh my goodness, I need to go back to school and become, you yeah. know, a nurse practitioner or do something. Yeah. And I ended up um, working as a nurse for a two times New York Times bestselling author, Amy Meyer. She's really big into thyroid and autoimmune health. And that was a huge blessing. The Lord really used that to segue me into like, how can you make this a profession after I had gotten better after a few yeah. years? So I was her nurse for years. And then I went back to school and started my own private practice yeah. and wellness center. And yeah. it really is my ministry. I'm like, you get to restore people's health so that they can use their God-given gifts to bring glory to him, yeah. whether they view it as God-given gifts or not, yeah. you know? And so what I do is more just asking the like, you have all these symptoms, but why? And how can we get to the root cause of it? So going back to your first visit with that functional medicine doctor, you at first thought, okay, this is woo-woo. This is not going to be as scientific as, you know, I think that it should be. Tell me about your first experience with her versus the first time you went to say the endocrinologist and these other doctors who kind of put you on the different medications and down different routes that weren't really helping. Like what kind of questions did she ask? How did she address your symptoms differently than those other doctors? That's such a good question. So, and I don't think I've ever been asked that question, but it was very different in the sense. I will start off and say that you know, it was a cash pay practice. And so because of insurance, people don't realize they're like, well, why can't all doctors spend an hour and a half with you? And it's because the insurance model, right? You got to mm. get this many people in and out. You only have 15 minutes with your doctor. And so I don't fault our doctors. I'm like, it's what you have to do to make money, right? Like mm. to see a certain amount of patients. But the one thing that really set that provider apart, and even what I do with patients now is the time, because your whole, it's not just symptoms. It's not just infertility or headaches. It's there's other pieces to the puzzle and you have to take the time to tell the story. And so, um, you know, she's asking me about, were you a C-section baby? Were you breastfed or bottle wow. fed? Going all, back. Going and, all the I'm way like, back. I don't know who cares. Yeah. <laughs> but wow. really everything tells the story. And um, so one, the time was the huge difference with her. And I'll just give the gastroenterologist for an example. Um, you know, I'd been really sick, gotten a couple stomach bugs while living yeah. abroad. And, um, you know, I was like, Oh, I'm just not used to the food here and it's Africa and Ecuador. And this is just life as a missionary. And, um, so, you know, I kind of discounted those things, but she was really big on talking about my stomach and the gut and how it relates yeah. to a lot of things. And then, you know, I was going to the gastroenterologist and he's like, well, let's do a colonoscopy. Let's do an endoscopy. And they didn't find anything. And then it makes you feel crazy. Cause you're yeah. like, but I swear this isn't normal. Yeah. And, um, he had put me on some medications and try this, do this. And I just felt like it was a lot of band-aids that he mm. was, you know, I was also trusting him and he's a great guy. He doesn't know about all this other stuff. That's the thing that makes me sad is that we're not taught this in medical school or nurse practitioner or nursing school. Um, so it was really just the time asking the why question, putting pieces of the puzzle together, not viewing my body as like you have a hormone system and a gut system and an immune system. It's like everything works together. The way that okay. God designed our bodies, it it all works together and it's all, it's not just different systems, it's one body, but learning how things relate, um, kind of putting the pieces of the puzzle together, asking about my lifestyle. I'm like, yeah. well, I don't know, you know, like I wasn't into healthy eating. I grew up, my mom was very healthy. Um, but really, I mean, she changed my lifestyle, my diet, my stress, sleep. I was working, you know, when I was stressed, trauma, ICU, night shift. Like, that's yeah. crazy for your body. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So she just kind of considered all inputs. And um, it's not like I got better overnight. It was not like one week on going gluten free or whatever, you know, yeah. it was this magical cure. But I started to see after a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Wow. I don't need this medication or I feel better in this way or I haven't, my hair's not falling out anymore. Yeah. And so it was, it's definitely one of those things with health. It's not a quick fix. Right. It's not a quick fat or cleanse or diet. It was changing my lifestyle and really changed my life. And then my so career. So she changed your, or recommended that you change how you sleep, how you eat, probably maybe how you deal with stress, mm -hmm. your nervous system and all of that. And eventually you got off the medications that yes. you were on. Wow. Yes. And then treated some imbalances. Um, I had some toxicity of some certain things in my body. And, and she tested this like through blood tests? Stool, or? urine and blood. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it was really fascinating and it definitely seemed overwhelming. And, you know, especially when I work with patients, I'm like, it's not this overnight, everything has to change. You know what I mean? It's like, how can I slowly implement things that will long-term make a huge impact? And again, I was not like, I want to be healthy. This is new year, new me type thing. For yeah. me, it was like, I was desperate and I was so sick. 
And I'd gone to all these people that I thought they have the answers. They're the specialists, yeah. you know, yeah. and no one was, I wasn't getting better, which looking back, I'm like, okay, God, I had to go through all of that to learn like, you yeah. know, exactly what I do now. And yeah, it's so interesting how we really do kind of have this mentality about functional medicine or integrative medicine, or especially if you hear the word like holistic, we think, okay, that person, that doctor, whatever, they're only going to give me essential oils. They're never going to give me an antibiotic, even if I'm like dying of a bladder infection or something. And they just don't believe in science. They only believe in kind of this new age stuff. But obviously, like what you just described in functional medicine and what you do now is not just, well, here's some lavender for everything that ails you. You are just looking at the root causes and then using the great gift of actual science to figure out how to solve those problems at the root level. Why do you think it is that so many of us, even those of us who can maybe, you know, we like more natural stuff, but our first thought when we hear holistic or integrative or functional is woo woo ineffective. That was my thought too. You yeah. know, it's crazy. It's it's out there. It's like, like is it from <laughs> is it from medical school? Is it from just propaganda? Like in I the think media? it's a combination. Like yeah. and I really will say, like, I feel like in the last couple of years, people are getting more into health and yeah. asking why questions and making choices for their health. And so I'm less of a freak now. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm maybe more normal and people are like, oh, I actually like have a question, you know. Yeah. Um and I don't know. I really don't know. I like to specifically answer your question because I feel like we talked about complement and alternative medicine in nursing school, but it was such a short snippet of it. But I'm the same way. And I even like I feel like sometimes I have to justify it to people, which I have nothing to prove. I am who I am and I do what I do and I love it. And it's my passion. It's yeah. literally what God has put me here to do. But, you know, I, I do sometimes find myself saying I don't like the term holistic because it gets such a bad rap. And even like my neurosurgeon, who's amazing and really into diet and lifestyle, he basically had told me, I was like, you know, I don't just like stand outside and earth and like rub lavender on my head and eat kale and call it yeah. a day. You know, yeah. I was like, I love nutrient dense food and oils and all the things. But, um, you know, I kind of have to tell people that there is more science. And I think there are some people that do give it a bad rap, you know, and yeah. like a lot of information out there and even social media. And I do feel like with an integrative, more functional approach and how I explain it to people is I take the best of the conventional world and the holistic world and we merge the two and integrate it for the best outcomes. And like we're left side of heaven. Not everybody's going to live in this perfectly healed body. And sometimes medications are not only necessary, but life saving. Yeah. You know, and that's where I tell people that. But my goal is I don't want to just put people on medicines to cover up a symptom. And then you're medicating another side effect. And then people don't even know where their symptoms originated. And yeah. so I don't know why it gets a bad rap, but it definitely does. I still hear it. And I do find myself being like, OK, here's the deal. I love oils. I love the nutrient, but I also have reverence for our conventional model when it comes to traumas, emergency. I mean, I've lived in third world countries. We are so blessed with the access to care, but I feel like where our medical system is getting it wrong is asking the why question and prevention and actually getting to the root cause. All right, quick pause from that amazing conversation to tell you about our first sponsor for the day. It's a very fitting sponsor for this episode, and that is Adele Natural Cosmetics. It is a toxin-free, handcrafted cosmetic company where all of their products are made in the USA. This is a family-owned company. I know the family that owns Adele Natural Cosmetics. I've met Arlene and her husband. They're such sweet Christian pro-life people. And she actually started Adele Natural Cosmetics because of her own health journey that started all the way back in 1999. And she just started paying attention to the ingredients that um, were in her makeup. And she decided to start making her own makeup. And I truly love it. I use their whole skincare regimen. I use their blush, their lipstick, their foundation. I truly love it. And I just love them. I love their moisturizer literally all of it. Use it every single day. Go to AdeleNaturalCosmetics.com. You can use promo code Allie for 25% off your first order. That's A-D-E-L, AdeleNaturalCosmetics.com. Promo code Allie for 25% off your first order. AdeleNaturalCosmetics.com, code Allie. Tell me a little bit more about what you think like mainstream um, medical wisdom gets wrong as far as not just diagnosing people with things, but how we treat things. Like I think about my grandmother, she died a couple of years ago and it's not even fully known what she 
died of. She had epilepsy. Mm. And epilepsy is like notoriously hard to find the right medication for. It's something that's in my family. And she just kept on getting all these different side effects from all the different medications. And they would increase the medicine. And then they would, you know, lower the dose or change the dose or add something. And it was like, I, there were just days and I'm like, I just feel like we should stop all medication and figure out what exactly is going on. Like, why does she also constantly have these infections? She's constantly on antibiotics and all this stuff. And it was like, if you ever brought up, well, why is this happening? Is there anything that we can change in her diet? Is there anything else we could do? And the doctors would always just say no. No, like that's some kind of crazy conspiracy theory. And I guess I just answered my own question. To me, that is like the saddest thing is that when you ask a doctor, is there anything else I can do except for taking this medication? It is almost always no. And like, I, I just, I have a hard time understanding why that is. I I do too. And I'm like, I, in, my, in all my spare time in the future, I'm like, that's why I would love to spend time equipping practitioners because I will say, I think the core at why they poo poo it is they're not taught it in school. They're textbook, right? You go to your classes, you have your professors, you have your curriculum, and it's all that you're taught. Um, and you're not qu- taught to question anything or make decisions for yourself or wonder why something is the way it is. And we have a lot of sound medical textbooks and research and all of that, but a lot of it actually hasn't been updated in a while, yeah. right? It takes a long time. And so, you know, when I tell people, they're like, how did you learn what you did? And I really, I got sick, and that's what made me have an open mind. And I was honestly desperate. Um, and I think that it went from an integrative, holistic, functional approach, people just have more tools in their tool belt versus our traditional medical model is what's the problem? You come in with a headache. OK, what what are the five different meds I can give to you? And it's like you, you just have limited tools in your tool belt. It's like you figure out the problem, the complaint, you figure out the solution, which is usually a pharmaceutical or surgical intervention or maybe watch and wait. And that's all they're taught. So that's their limited toolbox versus, you know, in the integrative approach, it's Hmm, what else could be causing it? Is it triggered around your cycle? You know, is it triggered by weather changes? Is it brought on by stress? Do you have nutrient deficiencies, you know, like mm-hmm. a magnesium deficiency that's leading to a tension headache? Um, and so, you know, that's where they're just not taught to think outside the box and have those tools and resources, which is a really big bummer because I feel like I've talked to a lot of um, like my friend's parents, like middle aged towards the end of their career, um, about to retire physicians, like family, traditional practice. And they've said, man, like we just our careers aren't as satisfying anymore because we feel like this patient keeps coming back and we don't know what else to do. We've done everything we know to do. We've ruled out the big stuff, but our hands are tied and we just and, you know, some people want to ask questions, but they're also so far into their career that they just keep doing what they're taught to do. Yeah. So it's just kind of like we're stuck in a cycle. Yeah. And okay, so for the person who they're just kind of learning about this and they're like, okay, I kind of want to start. Um, making sure that I'm doing everything in my own life to address the root causes that I have. Maybe, maybe they're not ready yet to go to a functional medicine practice, or maybe they just don't have access to one yet, but they want to start taking steps in their own life to live what is typically referred to as like a more non-toxic life. It's very overwhelming for people at the beginning. Like, what do you recommend? What's like a crash course, beginner's tips for someone that's like, I don't even know how to hand, like take control of my health and handle all this. What the heck do I do? Yeah. And I feel like that's a good place to be because you're curious, you want to do something, but it doesn't have to be this extreme whole house makeover, toss all these chemicals, you know, and I think also people don't even realize how many chemicals are in our daily life and how it can contribute to symptoms. And so, um, yeah, you don't want to put fear in people. You want people to care about their health and steward their bodies. And I think a lot of people have settled for just like, oh, I'm feeling this is just the way that I am and it's normal. And -and so-and-so has PMS and they get this. And so I think... I would encourage people to say, what like, what do I want to improve? Whether that's energy or maybe it's hormonal stuff. And there are specific things you can do for each, whether it's energy, stress, sleep issues. Um, so it really will depend on the person. But I would say some basics. And I think when people think about like cleaning up their lifestyle or their diet or non-toxic living, it can get overwhelming. And they'll do these cleanses or these they'll re- get down this rabbit trail of a blog. And I always tell people, I'm like, just get back to basics. Like, Really, one of the best things you can do is eat real food, you know, just because we have so many packaged things available. And, um, you know, I have to eat on the go. I'm a mom with two kids and three businesses. And so I have to eat on the go and out, too. But just 
really like getting around the family table, you know, however many the dinner table with family or friends and community and just eating real food. That's a very basic thing, but that's hard for a lot of people. Yeah. And what do you mean by real Real food? food? Does like, does rice count as real food? Or are you, what exactly is that? I would say yes. And I always tell people, I'm like to simplify it, shop the perimeter of the grocery store. You know, it's like produce, healthy fruits, vegetables. You know, some people I know you can go, you can make an argument for every diet actually. Like I could make an argument for why you should do this or this, but, and everybody's different. Listen to your body. That's what I also say. God gave us wise bodies and we need to listen to it and care for them. And, um, you know, when I say, think of eat real food and something that we do in our family is like, we eat vegetables with almost every meal. And even if it's a smoothie, I'm throwing some spinach in there in the morning or kale. Um, or if we do scrambled eggs, we'll throw in some spinach, you know? Um, so when, for me, what that looks like and everybody's totally different, but like, you know, just eating eggs and vegetables and meat and, um, you know, fish and just really simple things that you can make to be delicious, but yeah. without all the extra sugars and additives and all the And junk. how much should people care about organic versus not organic? So I really do strive. There's something called, well, the Environmental Working Group, the EWG. They're a great mm-hmm. resource online to check for chemicals and products and toxicity levels and um, also to check for produce and pesticides. And so you know, realistically, I just tell people to start eating real fruits and vegetables. And if they can afford it in their budget, I really do like organic. Um, but a lot of people can't, and that's not realistic. And so, and the thing is organic versus not organic. What's the biggest inf- differentiator? Um, just as far as what it's sprayed in and pesticides okay. and things like that. And so, which are chemicals and I actually have tested my body and other people that I've worked with and we're exposed to a lot on a daily basis. And mm-hmm. so, you know, I would say prioritize eating just buying real fruits and vegetables first and then if you can afford it or there's something called the dirty dozen and the clean 15 and the environmental working group every year comes out with a list that says the dirty dozen you know these 12 things of produce are the highest sprayed in pesticides and chemicals which are not good for your health and the clean 15 are the ones that have less pesticide revenue revenue residue Residue, yeah so anyway so that's what i tell people i'm like just focus on the clean 15 you know if you do not need to buy those organic like avocados and bananas they have shells they're not sprayed right um you know and i know a lot of people listening will probably be like well what's the big deal with pesticides doesn't it keep stuff off our food and it's it's one of those things where the more research comes out and glyphosate and the spraying of crops and um especially a lot of women that have a lot of hormone endocrine issues um you know certain chemicals can mimic estrogen in the body Mm -hmm. causing what's called estrogen dominance so that can lead just everything from pcos to pms infertility and Mm -hmm. i'm not saying that's at the root of all of those things you know you also have to look at stress and sleep but it's something that you know all the things that we put on our bodies um you know they can have a lot of chemicals and disrupt our body's natural hormones and how we respond to things and so i would say eating real food drinking enough water. I love filtered water, but just drink water, you know, not just drinking. I think so many people realize they have coffee in the morning, then they have a mid morning tea, then they might have an energy drink and they're like, Oh, I had water at dinner. And so just basics of just eating food that comes from the earth, whether it's animals, fruits, vegetables, um, you know, hydrating enough. Like I always say half your body weight in ounces of water. So if you're 120 pounds, 60 ounces of water, um, and sleeping. I don't don't think people people really under how much should we sleep. be sleeping do you think? i know different. everyone's different but is it the i eight love hours i would say eight hours heard? is okay. is ideal and okay. you know what there are seasons of life where if you have a newborn baby that's not realistic and yeah. so you you, you kind do of what you, can. you do what you can with where you're at in whatever season you're in but aiming for sleep i think stress is really really big and yeah. it's one of those things where sometimes there's stress that you can control sometimes you can't but it's how can you make your body more resilient under stress nourishing it with healthy food, you know, doing deep breathing, spending time in the word, you know, like for me, that's listening to worship music, driving down the road without kids screaming in the car, you know? So I feel like if you're in a stressful season, find those outlets. Um, but just getting back to basics, like getting sunshine and fresh air. I know that sounds so silly, but those are just basic places that to start that the average American just, we don't, we live inside, we're sedentary, we drink a lot of coffee and sugar and then yeah. wine at night. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it's just getting back to those things of just, I feel like sometimes health has to be this huge extreme cleanse and makeover and which diet do I follow? And it's like, just get back to the basics. And then yeah. if you have problems, customize from there, find an expert. Mm-hmm. 
All right, another break to tell you guys about Start Mail. So if you are concerned about your privacy on the internet, which you should be, especially when you are sending emails, then you need to ditch those big name email service providers, the free ones that are basically mining all of your data, all of your information and selling it to the highest bidder. And you need to use Start Mail. Start Mail secure email service keeps your inbox safe from unwanted spying eyes and protects you from spam. Every message can be encrypted or password protected and when you delete an email, it's gone forever. You also get unlimited disposable email aliases to keep your real identity hidden online. With just a few clicks, you can easily switch from your existing email provider and start taking advantage of StartMail's enhanced privacy protection. This is as private, as safe as it gets when it comes to email providers. Sign up today to save 50%. That's half off on your first subscription year. If you could do startmail.com slash Allie and join the thousands of people who have chosen StartMail for their email security needs. That's startmail.com slash Allie for 50% off. Startmail.com slash Allie. So the big thing that people are talking about right now is seed oils. Yeah. And I honestly hadn't heard of seed oils until a few months ago. I think I heard it on a podcast like The Hateful Eight or something like that. That includes sunflower oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, all that, all that kind of stuff. You could probably list them off the top of your head. Um, but that we're really not supposed to be consuming because they cause inflammation. Like how big of a problem is this? How much should we be trying to avoid these seed oils? And if you can list them off the top of your head, you can do it. Honestly, not, I don't know that okay. I can list all eight. I'm that's, like, I'm pretty impressed. But canola, fine. safflower, sunflower oil, um, you'll see like fully hydrogenated vegetable oil, yeah. things like that. Um, you know, and high fructose corn syrup got a lot of buzz for a good reason. I don't like it. But I feel like seed oils are the new people are really paying attention to them, yeah. just like they were high fructose corn syrup. And um, they're basically highly process the way that they are inflammatory the body so our body has an inflammatory response to them and so long term and like also for everyone listening I also have balance I do not just like live under a tree outside and never consume yeah. a meal out um but it, that's something that I do try and emphasize and prioritize because they can create all the daily choices add up and, in, and what I call it is an inflammatory cascade of just mm. long-term inflammation that later leads to diseases. And so, yeah. you know, if someone's in, has a lot of health symptoms or they're going through a health journey, definitely do their best to avoid it. Yeah. Um, but you know, like I'm very clean at home and I use avocado oil, coconut oil, um, olive oil is good, yes, right? I love yeah. olive oil. So it's like, those are all the things that I use at home. And I know that it's even hard. I'm They're eating just out in so many everything. things, even like, you know, organic stuff. I yes. saw in one of my kids vitamins. This is organic. If I said the brand, everyone would be like, oh, I use all their stuff because it's organic and natural. Sunflower oil. Yes. And like their gummies or, you know, gummy vitamins. I'm like, wait, what the Hold heck? Hold on. It's, it's gluten free and it's sugar free and it's and marketing is hard and confusing. Yes. But they really are in a lot of like even healthy packaged snacks, you know, and like, yes. um, that's the thing is I do my best to avoid it. I encourage people to avoid it. It, it. Eating out, even at some of the healthiest local restaurants, like I know that they're going to use that. And that's where I say, you know what, this meal with my friends and my family and the community around the table and enjoying someone to cook a meal for you and not it's having to do it. it. That is yeah. worth it because sometimes people that try to be too perfect, it becomes an idol and yeah. it, that's worse for your health. The stress and control is worse for your health than having a yeah. few crackers that has maybe the less ideal oil, you yeah. know, but do I try it, me personally? And I encourage people, especially on health journeys, like, yeah, cut it out as much as you can yeah. do the best with what you have. And you're not going to be able to control everything, but at your home and your meals, yeah. it's a great way to do it. I've also heard that it can lower testosterone levels in men, which is a problem. Yeah, I think it, I think that's what I read or it was like sperm count or something like that. Yes. And I think there's a lot of fertility is a major issue. I think we can agree that there are a lot of even talking to my grandfather, who's like 92, very educated man, colonel in the army, seen a lot of life. And he's like, I've never heard of autism before. I've never he's like, I remember that some people couldn't get pregnant, but like infertility. He's like, he's like, I feel like this is such a common theme, you know, ADHD. And so my grandfather's like, we, sometimes we had it and there wasn't a medical diagnosis for it, but he even is like, I feel like there's a lot of issues lately. Yeah. And especially with fertility, you know, a lot of focus is highlighted on the female, but, um, as we know, it takes two and a lot of it is the female and caring and sustaining pregnancy. But yes, there's been a lot of, um, and I know, cause I work with a lot of couples with this, but a lot of men that have had decreased sperm motility, um, you know, decreased sperm 
count, quality, things like that, that people have not seen like yeah. this in a long time. And I think there are multiple contributing factors, including our modern day diet, stress, chemicals, yeah. things like that. And how much should we care about plastics? That's another big one that I see emphasized a lot now. Yeah. And then you get in the rabbit trail of microplastics. Well, and yeah, it just and is, I even think about like, okay, <laughs> our, our Stanley, like this is... <laughs> Plastic, plastic and everything else. Well, I guess the top is plastic too. And even like, it's hard to find kids stuff. Am I going to so give my hard. toddler a glass, like, you know, thing to take to school? No. And so how much should, you know, we care about that? It's one of those things. And it's the same with oils. I'm like, you know, that's one of the things that I, um, I try really hard to in our home, right? It's like the glass Pyrex that we use. And then other people will be like, well, what's the big deal with plastic? It leaches chemicals, especially if you're putting hot things in it, you know? Yes. I saw, I just saw a post this morning that you really shouldn't put the plastic liner in your crock pot. Yeah, because a it lot heats of people up. do that mm -hmm. and, and it leaches. That can be, yeah. yeah, interesting. Yeah, so I just, you know, do the everything in the crock pot and then yeah. you got to kind of soak it and wash yeah. a little bit more. But it is. And I, I definitely that's the thing. It's like I make an effort. And you know what? That's the thing where it's like I have a straw that's not perfect, but I have the exact same one, same color. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but the things that I can focus on, you know, it's like I prefer silicone and glass. And I had I think I had actually shared something on Instagram. Was it this weekend? Yeah, it was Saturday. My family went out to barbecue and um, um, I was with my two boys and my husband and I just took a picture because I'm like, you know, people look to me for health advice and non-toxic living. And I was like, you know what? Here's me drinking unfiltered water out of a plastic cup for anyone wondering. I live a normal life yeah. and I was thirsty, yeah. you know, and it's not filtered water and it's not. And so that's where I really do feel like in my home or even bringing things to work for me, whether it's, you know, bringing in a glass jar, a mason jar. Um, Pyrex, whatever. I just do the best that I can. Yeah. But I do think plastics are a huge problem. I do think that, um, you know, they have a lot of chemicals in them. And especially for women, it's I know this is kind of a integrative word, but it's called an endocrine disrupting chemical. Yeah. And what that does is it just affects our hormones. And I think no one can deny the amount of hormonal problems, whether it's transitioning into menopause and having this horrible time. It's actually not supposed to be that way. Yeah. Some people transition well, but um, it's so common and so normal that everything gets normalized. Like PMS is normal and i'm like guys it's not <laughs> i know i heard the other day actually i think for the first time that like cramps before your periods are not necessarily good or normal right I yes. didn't know that. Really? See that? And that's where it's like, I wouldn't have known that either until I got into where I was. Yeah. But I just yeah, that a lot of everyone. women are just like, yeah. you know, I'm laid up and I'm, I have to be on the heating pad and I have to miss a day of work. And I'm like, oh my gosh, people just settle for that being normal. And yeah. just because it's common doesn't mean it's normal. And that's, that's where I mean, where people just settle for this level of health, you know, now, now I'm also very in tune with, Hey, when you are on your menstrual cycle, like you probably should rest. You probably should relax. Your body is going through a lot. Maybe you need more yeah. iron. Um, but really understanding our bodies and our hormones and, you know, like when you're on your period, it may not be the time to have five social events and do high intensity interval workouts. Yeah. It's honoring your but body. But you also shouldn't have to like suffer. shut down for yes. a whole day in so much pain. And I have so many friends. I remember, you know, in high school and stuff like that, it was like, Oh, I can't go to school today. And we were just like, Oh, yep. You know, yeah. PMS is She's normal. On her period. Or it's like, yeah. you know, it's normal to be like, I'm in such a bad mood for the week before my period yeah. of my Don't period and me. after my period. So I have like <laughs> one good window or something like that's not normal, right? No. It shouldn't be that way. No, it really shouldn't. And I, I tell people a little fatigue is okay. And like letting your body rest and, um, but no, it's not normal. And that's the thing where it's like, Oh, I just get headaches. Oh, I just get allergies. And just because things now I'm not saying, and this is where I'm also like, we are left side of glory. We live in a fallen world. Yeah. No one has arrived at this perfect state of health. I mean, I feel pretty dang good. I have zero symptoms. Like I can confidently, when I've done symptom questionnaires, I'm like, I don't have headaches. I don't have this. I don't have yeah. I get sick every now and then. That's normal. You know, I come into contact with things. But um, yeah, like it's not normal for people to just settle with allergies and headaches. Okay, talk and to hormones. me about allergies. I'm asking yeah. you all these things that I like did not I even prepare you for, but they're just genuinely curious because yeah. I have been dealing with allergies so much over the past couple of weeks, just like itchy, sneezing every morning. Yeah. And so, but I have also heard probably you say that allergies and seasonal allergies, again, does not have to be like a normal thing, mm -hmm. right? Which Yeah, I tell people to sometimes when they transition to like new environments and they're adjusting to a new climate, sometimes there is a little bit of a like, ooh, hold on, what's going on here? Okay. Yeah. Um, but at the root of allergies, it can be different things. So that's when I would ask people like, okay, so what changed? Do you know what I mean? Because allergies actually is part of our immune system and our immune response. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would say, okay, Ali, what happened a couple weeks ago? Did anything happen? And maybe you're like, no, nothing happened, you know, but you 
look at certain things, um, and it could be things from years back. Um, sometimes people that have had to be on long-term steroids or even a lot of women that have been on birth control, um, it can lead to candida and fungal overgrowth. Have you mm-hmm. ever heard of fungal? I've heard of candida before. So yeah. sometimes, so a lot of times when I ask people about symptoms of that, that can be a lot of times a root cause of allergies. Mm. And so um, I will ask people, you know, certain things like, do you have itchy ears? Do you have sugar carb cravings? Do you have sometimes brain fog? Um, you know, do you have seasonal allergies, any recurrent yeast infections, whether it's ringworm, toenail fungus, female issues, you know? And so those are all things that I ask of like, huh, I wonder if there's some fungal stuff going on that could be contributing to allergies. Um, sometimes people, it's new environments. They just moved and they didn't realize that the carpet in their new home yeah. or maybe getting a new pet or there's lots of different contributing factors. So it's not just Zyrtec or Sudafed every day. Like, yeah, there like could it's be like, some well, deeper things. There can be some deeper things. And that's yeah. the why question of like, and you can't go crazy and rack yourself and be like, I got a headache. Why did I get a headache today? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but um, stress can weaken the immune system. And so sometimes when people go through periods of stress, that suppresses the immune response or heightens it to mm. respond inappropriately. Yeah. Um, my son ha- was having, he's three and nothing had changed. We're in our same home. We have a dog. Never had crazy allergies. And he was having almost like asthma type stuff. And I'm really like, let's do the steamy shower. We can do saline and a nebulizer to open you up or bind mucus. Like I got all the tricks up my sleeve, right? And um, everything I did, nothing was touching it. And I was like, this is different. This is like true asthma, like kind of constricted airways. Like, you know, I have the medical background along with mom gut of like something's not right. Um, And sure enough, he was having asthma like episodes and it was at nap time. And I'm like, there's something in his room. This is so strange. Well, it was right when school started and he has, I know this is crazy, but this is just an example of a story that happened last September. He had started school and they have a pecan tree and the, the, where their playground is. And um, he had all that, he called them acorns. I'm like, no, baby, those are pecans, but they come in a shell. And I knew in my gut, I was like, something is not right. I mean, he's having like true asthma. Like I feel yeah. like I need to go do breathing treatments, get medicine. So I was like, let me just test him to see if there's a weird allergen that's triggering this. And sure enough, it's pecan and he has a pecan tree at school. Wow. So, you know, there's just stuff like yeah, that. that just asking questions. Yeah. And I just knew that that's not typical for my son. And so, and he wasn't Interesting. sick. Interesting. So, so you're, I mean, do you just try to get him to like avoid? Yes. yes. Avoid, kind of focus on the immune system, you know, eating healthy. There are certain supplements for allergies, things like quercetin, stinging nettles. These are all kind of herbs and things yeah. like that. So I'm doing that with him for a little bit. Um, and just focusing on just like, how can we get your body to respond better? And he goes to school three times a week and he's great now. Yeah. You know, it just almost took a little bit of time to reset. Yeah. Gosh, there's so many things like that, that parents deal with. I think one big one that I've seen a lot is eczema. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I've got some nephews that have it. Um, but my, my youngest had it. And when we went to the doctor, it was like steroid cream, steroid mm-hmm. cream. And then like, I just randomly saw on Instagram, these adults going through like steroid, basically detox withdrawals. withdrawals, and they were trying to get off of it. And they realized for them, their eczema was a part of their diet or an allergy or something like that. And I was like, I don't, I, I don't want that, you know, in 20 years from now. And so what can I change like about, about the diet or anything? And I'm not like any kind of specialist, but you're a mom and you, but, have, you have a mom. You know, there yeah. were allergies there and we addressed the allergies and we got those things away and we haven't seen any eczema in like over a year without any steroid cream. I'm not saying that that's, you know, going to happen to everyone, but just kind of matching your own story. Sometimes it does just take some, a little extra because when we went to the dermatologist, there were no questions, no questions questions about like, well, you know, like, you know, uh, what's the diet like or what are the out? There was nothing like that. And so uh, to me, it was like, well, it would just kind of make sense that maybe if this thing is irritating in some ways that it could maybe cause this kind of eczema response. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But well, obviously that was we need too. help. My son sometimes. had an egg allergy that caused eczema. Yeah. And it's one of those things where it's like, I knew better, but if your kid's miserable and can't sleep through the night, you got to do something temporarily while you figure that out. But same thing was this. It, chlorine really irritated his skin and he had eczema yeah. that derived from an egg allergy. And so it's just one of those things that I always tell moms, I'm like, advocate for your kids, ask questions. Sometimes meds are necessary. Sometimes people in the natural world are too prideful and they're like, I've never done a med. I never will. And I'm like, your kid's not sleeping through the night because they're itching. Like you got to do something. You know what yeah. I mean? So that's that fine line of even if you have to use meds, don't feel guilty. Use that to comfort your child until yeah. you can get to this place where you help find the root cause. And sometimes antibiotics are, are like necessary. necessary and yes, that's beautiful are. thing. Yes, they are. Um, <laughs> 
Speaking of kids, before we move on to the next segment of our conversation, speaking of kids, you did talk about like you try to eat a vegetable at every meal. Your kids are three and one. My kids are also three and one. I know it's not always easy to get them to eat the things that you want them to eat. So like how is how have you navigated that, but also just kind of like integrating health and wellness into their little lives? Yes. And I really try to be mindful of that because I don't want to be this controlling, nagging parent. You have to eat your peas and you have to, you know what I mean? You yeah. don't want it to become this power struggle. And they are little humans that have their own preferences and that's okay. Um, I will say, and that's too, where I feel like f- part of loving and caring for my child is creating the safe home for them to thrive in of like, we don't use a lot of chemicals in our laundry detergent and those things. And we do our best with diet, but like if we're at a birthday party and he doesn't have a true allergy, enjoy. You know, yeah. I'm like, I have a lot of healthy mom friends. I'm like, oh, that's simple meals. Yeah, we yeah. make that, you know. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, when it comes to food, my one-year-old, I am like so blessed. He is the best eater. It is unbelievable. Like yeah. I don't have a secret. I yeah. exposed him. To, I, I will yeah. say starting early on all we did was vegetables. We didn't do fruits a lot at first because then mm. they're like, I just want sweet. Yeah. I don't want that. Um, so that's one thing I do tell moms is a variety when they introduce foods, lots of vegetables, start them out that way. Um, and variety, like you, they don't want to have peas and carrots at every single meal. You know what I mean? Maybe chop carrots differently, things like that. My three-year-old, mm, you know, he's getting a little pickier. Yeah, and don't they? I mean, yes, they go they through do, those and stages. It's normal, they and it's, go through those yes. stages. My daughter, she will literally like act like beef is the grossest thing that she's ever seen. I'm like, literally for 18 months of your life, this is all your favorite. you wanted to eat. <laughs> and now she just doesn't want anything to do with it. She was like kale, beets, all of that. And all of a sudden it's like... Don't you know, touch where's it. my mac and cheese? Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's difficult it's to hard. deal with that. And that's where I find just keep exposing them, you know, and I'm not going to make it this power struggle. Yeah. And sometimes that there is a treat where like, you know, you do have to eat your dinner before you're excused from the dinner table. And if you want to go have a treat or go with mommy to go get it, ice cream or whatever. Yeah. Um, I say that people are like, your kids had ice cream like five times. And it's true. Like, it's not like, but we're also normal. And, and here's where I'm really big on like finding healthier alternatives for things. You know, I want my kid to be normal. I want them to have pizza, but we're not going to go to the pizza joint every Friday night. And, you know, and so making our own, we do like a family pizza night. Um, but I will say for the, for the toddler, um, re-exposing in different formats so like he will eat kale if it's cooked in a soup and i'm like that's strange because if i just made kale the exact same way and it looks the same but for whatever reason um green smoothies he loves getting veggies and green smoothies i even do frozen zucchini in there he can't taste it yeah um and then yeah just different like it's the strangest thing he would never touch broccoli recently but maybe if i put butter on it or um maybe if i blended i make this like green gut healing soup with bone broth and a bunch of green veggies he loves that and he'll like drink it up i'm yeah. so confused i'm like that's purely vegetables yeah but, so i just, just try not to make ways. it yeah, yeah different ways exposure you know sometimes you could throw it in the smoothie or the zucchini and carrot muffins and yeah. i just try not to make it a power struggle and just realize you know what He's at an age and he has preferences and he doesn't want that right now. And that's okay. It's not worth like the The screaming match and all of that. But that also doesn't mean that we have to just say, okay, fine. Junk food all the time. Yes. I do think it is about consistency. Discipline on the parents' part. Yes. Because it's that's hard. hard. I think it takes a lot more time and effort. And that's like one of my resolutions for this year is to just be more consistent in introducing new things and all trying that. new recipes and oh, so it's hard. hard so hard it's hard with moms that work and have two littles it's not like you're home cooking and yeah yeah it's day. hard Okay, let me tell y'all about Eden Pure. Eden Pure makes air purifiers. You can purify the air in your home and get healthy, clean, fresh smelling air. You can eliminate odors. You can even kill mold and mildew and bacteria and viruses with Eden Pure's thunderstorm air purifier. Uh, this type of air purifier that they sell just plugs right into your wall. It's totally unnoticeable. It doesn't even really make any sound. You can also travel with it. And so, you know, those musty hotel rooms, you don't know what's been in the air, what people have been doing in that hotel room before you got there. You just plug in the thunderstorm air purifier and you are good to go. You can feel really good about the air that you are breathing. They use oxy technology that naturally sends out O3 molecules into the air, seeks out odors and pollutants and destroys them. Right now, you can save $200 on an Eden pure thunderstorm three pack for whole home protection you'll get three units for under two hundred dollars that's a fraction of the cost compared to other air purifiers that can go for over six hundred dollars so go to edenpuredeals.com right now put in discount code alley three to save two hundred dollars that's alley three to save two hundred dollars edenpuredeals.com code alley three shipping is free (laughs) 
Um, okay, I want to talk about another part of your health journey, which I'm sure was very unexpected to you. Mm-hmm. And I think this is maybe around the time I started following you. Last year, you found a brain tumor, correct? Yes. And so tell me about that. I'm sure that, you know, that's not exactly how you were expecting the last part of last year to look. Yes. Last year and even just my story, you know, people that hear Taylor Dukes has a brain tumor, like she's the healthiest person I know. And um, I'm also like, God, what? I thought I went through my healing journey and you brought me to where I am. Was that just an intermission? Yeah, it's like I was and, already sick. Yeah. I don't need to yeah, do this And again. I know and trust that the Lord has a plan and a purpose through it. And I've already seen that. Like I really have. It's not just something I'm telling myself. Um, but essentially I have no symptoms. Like I said, I j- still have no symptoms of this brain tumor. And I, there's this technology, um, a scan, a full body MRI, and they have a few, I've just, I'm always researching, learning. I'm a nerd at heart. Like people don't realize like I'm social, but I'm like, I'm a nerd, you guys. Um, and, uh, and I've followed this technology for years just for patients, you know, and, um, my husband's mom passed away from non-smoking lung cancer. So I've always wondered, I'm like, she never smoked. What the heck? Like, was it an environmental thing? It just makes you ask questions, yeah. genetics, environment. Um, and so my husband, I had actually reached out to the scan for him. He had this weird bronchiogenic assist between his heart and lung when he was in eighth grade. And so knowing his mom's history and his story, I'm like, okay, as scary as the scan could be, what if it's early? It's early. The purpose of the scan, it's an MRI technology that's radiation and dye free that does the full body. Oh, radiation to detect. free. Yes. Interesting. Okay. And so... Um, It's just a preventative scan. And uh, so I had reached out to the company myself for my husband. And I had said, hey, just on Instagram, I was like, hey, I'm a provider. I can write an order for my husband. Do I just like fax it in or does he just sign up on your website? And they reached out and they were like, hey, we see that you educate, you know, on this platform and you're a healthcare provider. We'd love to gift it to you. And I was like, well, it's not really for me. It's for my husband. And like, thanks, but no thanks. I don't really need it. And after talking with my husband, I didn't tell them that. I was thinking that. I was like, well, it's not for me. Should I try to gift it to him through them? But I was like, you know what? It's good for me to learn. Maybe I need to do it. Well, Lord knows that I needed it because through that, I found out I have a brain tumor. Wow. So I'm really grateful yet also like, oh, I wish I never did it. I wouldn't know. But I like I always say and I've always said when you know better, you do better. And I know I have a brain tumor and now I can do better and it allow me to kind of figure out what my future looks like. And so not that I have control of that, but make wise yeah. decisions moving forward. And so it was Labor Day weekend. Um, I had actually got the results sent to me because I'm a medical provider and we were on the way to the aquarium and I was going through my phone. I was like, yay, I get my results. I'm like, I wonder if everything from thyroid or back stuff or yeah. whatever. And uh, my husband thought I was kidding because I'm a huge jokester. And he's like, you are joking. You're not serious. I was like, no, I have a brain tumor. So that wow. led to my initial um, report in the medical field. It's called differential diagnosis. Like, what was your feeling though in that moment? Was it like this must be a mistake. Like, did yes. your stomach drop? Oh, like, I was sick. Did and you, I literally did you was start just... sobbing, or were you in shock? I was sick to my stomach, and this is where I'm like, dang it! In the medical field, you just know too much, and like brain tumor. And I don't want to say this because there are plenty of people that have lived with brain tumors and defied prognosis. But to me, some of the initial different it's called in the medical world, it's called differential diagnosis. Things that it could be. So the radiologist listed what it could be, and it was metastatic disease lymphoma what's metastatic disease um metastasis like cancer okay yeah great question so if if i had cancer somewhere else in my body and it metastasizes to my brain they'd call that like a metastatic you know it metastasized to my brain so metastatic disease lymphoma which is a form of cancer um glioblastoma which is the most yes i think i've heard of that right one of the most lethal forms of cancer usually people are given five months to a year to live once they're diagnosed um, so I'm sitting here looking at this and it said other things like astrocytoma, oligodendrioma, you know, all these things. And I'm like, I didn't even know all of them, but I'm like thinking glioblastoma. I'm like, this is a death sentence. This is literally like my kid was eight, nine months at the time. I mean, I was just breastfeeding him on the beach. It was raining. So we're like, let's go to the aquarium in town. And uh, my world flipped upside down. I was sick to my stomach. I did not have peace. <laughs> I have since God has provided literally piece that I just can't explain in so many circumstances. Not every day. I still have my hard moments, but um, that first week was really tough. I'm making phone calls. I'm literally thinking like, this is my life. This is my life. And I'm not going to see my kids and grow up. Yeah. And it was, it was, that, was, that would scary. have been, I think the hardest part for me yes. just thinking I'm not going to see my kids grow up. Yes. And that is, that is still the hardest part for me. Um, But I, when I found, so that was the first initial I had gotten in touch. I mean, I was on the beach, thank God for people and friends and connections because I had got in touch with an oncologist and a local neurosurgeon. 
And uh, most people, by the way, are finding out about brain tumors because they've had headaches for years mm. or they have a seizure and they wake up in the hospital right, and right. it's like you find out everything then. Yeah. For me, I'm like I'm at the beach with my family on the Texas coast and um, I got a repeat MRI with contrast to show us a little bit more of like what it looks like. And praise God, um, we still don't know if I, we don't know if it's cancer or not. We don't know. We find mm -hmm. out in a few weeks after my brain surgery and pathology. But, um, you know, I've been dealing with this for four months, almost five months. And um, when we did the repeat MRI, it came back as non-enhancing. In medical terms, it's not super vascular. It didn't light up like a Christmas tree on the scan. And a lot of times cancer will do that. And so we're hopeful. We're like, please, God, let it be benign like we think it is. But you just don't know until you have pathology, which means getting okay. in there, sampling it. And so, yeah, so that was the original diagnosis. I've since, you know, met with several oncologists, multiple neurosurgeons, flight all flown all over the country to meet with specialists. Um, and so I'm very unique. No one has a brain tumor with no symptoms. Oh, really? I mean, it's just most people. No one has like an incidental finding, you know, well, yeah, just because it's preventative so scan. Exactly. So headaches, seizures. And so I feel so great. I also am like, okay, God, you've given me this time to quarterback my care team. And I have a local neurosurgeon and oncologist, you know, in Fort Worth. Um, but I'm also have sought out some other experts who I will be flying to Arizona for surgery in two weeks from today. Wow. So soon. that's February 1st. February 1st. And the surgery, you said pathology is where they go in there and they remove the tumor. So okay. So they're going to remove the whole tumor as much as they can. It, okay. Um, the brain's tricky. And what I've been told by my surgeon is it kind of, you think, of it it's not like just a little bead that you go mm -hmm. and scrape out right um it has infiltrative components and so they'll get as much as they can it's kind of infiltrated my brain Without, tissue like, removing your yeah because you still have to, parts of your brain yes like yeah. motor sensory speech memory and so that's what's really hard about the brain um and i've been told surgery is not curable it can help but it's 100 likely to come back not if but when by oh, my really? surgeon mm -hmm. really so and brain tumors for people that have experienced them they're very likely to come back even if it's benign um, so that's where I am motivated to do anything and everything. And at the end of the day, the Lord is in control and he knows the number of my days, but I am, what can I do to get this to not come back? Um, and you know, I've even done a lot of integrative treatments. I'm on a whole healing protocol right now. I have even in my purse over there, a laser and light watch that I'll do on my way home. I put it in my ears and in my nose. Um, I've gone to international clinics in the last four months to go and seek some care that's not available here in the States. Um, and what's laser and light? It just helps with like brain tissue. And mm. a lot of people that have, that are doing integrative oncology, um, like, you know, an integrative approach, they might be doing chemo and radiation, but they might be doing a lot of other things. You can do localized light therapy, like heat and things like that. Um, I can't do that because my brain and my skull. And so what I do is I do these little ear pieces and intranasal pieces. Um, you know, I did a ton of IVs when I was at clinics over out of the country, hyperbaric oxygen chambers. So I very much even tying back to my career of like, I have reverence for the conventional model of surgery and pathology. And I'll need, I'll know if I need chemo or radiation after surgery but I'm also like, I'm not just going to do that. Right. Yeah. Um, and I tell people all the time, if I had only met with my local neurosurgeon and my local oncologist, they're amazing people. I love them. So kind, so wonderful. I would be so discouraged that these are my only options. Um, but to know I have an integrative oncologist in California, my surgeon, um, is very much about looking at genetics and molecular stuff of the tumor and lifestyle and diet. And I swear, I feel like him and I are going to do a research study or something yeah. because he's open-minded to find a neurosurgeon that's open-minded. And so that's where I find a lot of hope and confidence in how can we get the best of both to get the best yeah. outcome, to live a long, healthy life. Is it possible that you've had this brain tumor your whole up to life? 10 years, they said. Up to 10 years. Okay. So they are, that's the hard thing is that it's like, I have no symptoms, you know? So it's like, how long has this been here? And yeah. then you have to ask the question. Um, and a lot of people ask, well, then why, if you have no symptoms, wouldn't you just watch and wait? And part of me is like, yeah, I want that. I don't want a brain surgery. I mean, it's, it's stinks. It's yeah. scary. And am I going to come out normal? And you know, what's life going to be like? And am I going to be able to hold my kids for a while? And that's really hard. But, um, there is wisdom, some wisdom. I mean, God can do anything. And I'm like, if I did a repeat MRI and it shrunk or went away, oh my gosh, I it would be the happiest, best thing ever. Um, but at the same time, there is wisdom in getting it out because it could grow to a point where it is inoperable. And that's that's a hard reality to sit with, you know, because then you're doing as much radiation as you can do or some chemo and it still may not be. So I feel fortunate that mine is in a location that is operable. 
you know, I'm not symptomatic. I don't want to be unwise and wait until I have a seizure. You know, I've also, you know, I've done all the testing to see if I'm at risk and all the workups and healing is like a full-time job right now for me, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but I got an EEG. I'm not at risk for seizures, but you know, I do wonder as a mom, what if I were driving my kids and I had a seizure, yeah. you know? And so I don't want to wait until something happens, but I've also, you know, had four to five months to pray even my neurosurgeon was like, you're not symptomatic. You own three businesses, get through the holidays, enjoy your baby turning one, like just enjoy life. And that's what I've done. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm really, I'm focused on my own healing protocol. And so I really relate to people going through health stuff. I'm not just like this practitioner that's like, do this, do this. I'm like, I'm in it, yeah. you know, in a very extreme degree with a brain tumor. Yeah. Um, but I get it, you know, and I'm also like, it's my birthday and I wanted a glass of wine and go enjoy a date night out with my husband. And I did that, yeah. you know, even though I'm on this healing protocol. And so, um, but yeah, I'm definitely in a season devoted to healing and just waiting to see like, okay, God, what's next. All right, last sponsor for the day, and that is NetSuite. And this is especially for all of you business owners out there. If you don't know the numbers in your business, if you don't know what's going on on the number side of things, then you don't really know what's going on, period. And when your business is growing really fast, you wanna make sure that all of that stuff is being organized and managed well, and that is is where NetSuite comes in. Over 33,000 businesses know their numbers because they use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system to power your growth with visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more. NetSuite is everything you need to grow all in one place. With NetSuite, you can automate your processes and close your books in no time while staying well ahead of your competition. 93% of surveyed businesses increase their visibility and control after up upgrading to NetSuite. For the new year, NetSuite has a new financing program for those ready to upgrade at netsuite.com slash Allie, netsuite.com slash Allie for this financing offer on the number one financial system for growing businesses, netsuite.com slash Allie. Tell me what God has taught you through this, because you did say you didn't have peace, which I think is a very normal reaction when you first found this out, but that God has kind of given you that peace that passes understanding throughout these past few months. So just tell us about the spiritual side of this journey. Yes. I have never felt so close to the Lord. I mean, truly. And I had a pretty, I came to know the Lord in college and, you know, I've been walking very closely with him. It's not like, oh, I always knew of God, but now I really know. Yeah. Um, I have a pretty intimate relationship with God even prior to this, but um, and I do, I don't fully know what he's doing. Cause like, right. I'm still at the beginning of this journey, but I have just seen so many glimpses. One of just his hand in this, like just stuff that I can't even make up that I can't even recount in our time here today, but I call them my God winks. Um, you know, Waymakers, the song that's just been carrying me through a lot of people know that song, you know, and just, it comes up almost every time I'm in the car, like, okay, God, I get it. I know you're going to make a way. I don't know what that looks like, you know? And like when I went to a treatment center that was out of the country, you know, you'd go to treatment six days a week, full-time job basically. And on Sundays you have it off and we do our own little church service. It's a Christian healing center. And, um, they do integrative medicine and the guy leading it was like one of our friend's husbands. And he was like, okay guys, we're going to start off with Waymaker." And I'm just like, God, Aww, you know, yeah. God's been really kind to give me those, I call them my God winks. Um, but I've just really seen so much of him through it. And I know the promises of God, but actually experiencing them. Like I know what it's like when Jesus like slept in the storm when it was crazy. Cause it's like my world and my, my whole world is chaos right now. You know, I'm preparing for a brain surgery, but like I can rest at night knowing that like the Lord has this. He knew this isn't a surprise to him. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't show this with a lot of people, but what the heck, why not? Here we are. I was given a prognosis, like a limited number of years of my life. And basically wow. I was told, even if it's benign, my goal, my doctor told me, um, you know, that it would be for you to make it to this point in life, which means I wouldn't see either kid graduate from high school, wow. which is like, Ah, makes you sick, right? Of Those are the moments where I'm of like, course. God, is heaven really better than seeing every milestone? I mean, it's hard to imagine, yes. you know? And so it I is. have my moments and that's where yeah. I tell people, I'm like, I am not full of faith and optimistic and positive Pamela all the time, you yeah. know? Um, but I am able to rest at night and I have seen even the company, it reached out to me um, and they were like, hey, since you've shared we have had five people use your code that have had significant life altering diagnosis that they're able to seek care sooner with an early intervention. And, and I don't know their full stories. Um, I don't know if I ever will. I've had one person reach out and she has liver cancer. Um, but you know, I've, I've had people reach out and I'm like, okay, God, thank you for using that. You yeah. know, thank you for 
if it weren't for my husband's mom's lung cancer, I don't know that I would have ever done this scan. So that you see God's hand from 10 yeah. years ago, protecting us and our family. And, um, you know, I'm one of those people that I know interest of the Lord puts us through things and we don't always know why. And sometimes I may not even know until I get to heaven one day. I'm like, right. okay, God. Um, but I will say he has given me a glimpse of his plan and purpose and just so many things along the way, like a local pastor's wife had a dream about me and all these things she's sharing. I'm like, I don't even hardly know you. And the way that I found out my surgeon and Arizona, I kept hearing about this guy in Arizona, but I'm like, well, I don't have a name. I, what do I do? God, just Google Arizona neurosurgeon. You know, I just, I kept hearing through three people. And finally this, this colleague of mine, who's an integrative oncology expert, I said, do you by chance know? And she says, here's your doctor at this first place in Arizona. And I was like, okay, God, like, it's just, there's so many things along the way that aren't a coincidence. You can't make up. I feel very cared for, very supported in this process. Um, you know, it's unified my family and I live life through a new lens. Like yeah. the, the poopy diaper when my nanny cancels, who cares? I get to spend a day with my kid. Like yeah. what a gift versus before it's like, I have this to-do list. And so I feel like, yeah, God's just, that's a long tangent of just, I've really seen him just shift. And, and, and that's the other thing. None of us are guaranteed tomorrow. Every moment counts. Every moment of every day matters, but we live life as if we get to make these plans and grow old and be grandparents one day. And that's not a promise to any of us. And, yeah. um, so even given a prognosis and as hard as that is, I'm like, only God knows the number of my days. And you know what? I want to defy odds and I want to live yeah. a long, healthy life and be a good mom for my kids. But I also think that I could get in a car wreck tomorrow, yeah. you know? And so it's kind of him to give me this new lens to live through with young babies and to yeah. not miss out on every moment. Yeah. And it's such a good perspective too, because it shows that what you do and why you live the way that you do and encourage other people to live the way that you do is not to necessarily control every health outcome yes. because that's impossible. You do it because you're stewarding your body that even I'm sure if someone told you, okay, I mean, this is a tragic thing. If someone told someone, you know, you're going to die in two weeks, these are your last two weeks in your life, it would still be right of that person to steward their body well, because that is how we glorify the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's not only to try to control our health, although that is part of it, but it's also because we believe that taking care of our bodies is something that pleases the Lord. Mm -hmm. Not that, you know, eating cake and no, drinking but our bodies are doesn't a gift to please us the Lord and ever. taking care of them. Yes. But I think that also just this diagnosis gives a really interesting perspective that you're not showing this because you're like, look, I've never had a health problem and you can be more like me. You're showing people this because it's like, okay, this is the way I think that we can honor our bodies and honor God through our bodies, you know, in the best way that we can without, mm -hmm. you know, not missing out on those opportunities just for fun and leisure and all of that. Exactly. So, even and I that, think that's when people are like, Taylor, you're the healthiest person. And what I don't know, and a lot of things that I have not shared is my, my new goal is how can we figure out and change the trajectory for people that do have brain tumors, right? Yeah. And research. And I'm the question asker. And so I'm going back to what happened to me 10 years ago and that I'm finding answers. Like yeah. we are, I haven't shared this, but we are finding that I have certain things with my blood brain barrier and a certain parasite actually this is the first time I'm sharing this, the certain parasite that actually the American Cancer Society and the International Journal of Cancer has linked two gliomas and young middle-aged people. And mm. that's me. Yeah. And so it's it's interesting to find the data and not that my neurosurgeon's ordering this. I'm working with an integrative oncologist and the Lord is just leading me because I really do feel like this is part yeah. of what I'm supposed to do. So I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know if I have a book. I don't know if I have a research study or if I'm just the case study myself, but I do believe that the Lord has allowed this to happen and he's going to use it. And I know yeah. and trust that. I really, really do. And just to, I think you already said it, but what's the name of the test that you use, the MRI type test? Yes, that? it's called the Pernuvo scan. P-R-E-N-U-V-O. They have a, I'm not affiliated with them. Yeah. Literally have a linker code for people to get a discount. I get no commission. Like it is, I am not affiliated with them in any way. It truly is just something that I did, yeah. not knowing I was going to find this. And yeah. Um, early detection is key for, you know, better outcomes. And so that's yeah. my story and I'm really grateful for it, yeah. but it's called the Pernuvo scan. Well, we'll be praying for you. I know the relatable audience has loved this conversation and they're going to be praying for you. Your surgery is February 1st mm -hmm. in Arizona. Mm -hmm. And I do think that you have a Gibson Go link, right? Yes. That people can go to if they want to support you, if they want to know more about this journey, I can link it in the description of this episode. If you want to support Taylor, I'm sure that she would really appreciate that. And I know more than anything, she would appreciate your prayers and just thinking about everything that she's going through and her kids and her husband. I mean, this is a lot. 
this is a lot. And I'm very hopeful. I'm very hopeful for the result of the surgery and what's to come of it. But I'm even more hopeful in the testimony that God has given you and the Mm -hmm. platform that he's given you. I mean, who knows when God, when it looks like God is doing one thing, he's doing a million things. Mm -hmm. And like you said, we do not know the constellation of people's testimonies until we get to heaven, but you never know what small thing you shared, what seemingly mundane action you took or, you know, what you did that led someone to where they are, especially in their testimony um, to becoming a Christian. So we just never know. We just right. never know. We never know. And it makes me so. excited about heaven to see one day. And it's kind when we get the constellations of that are going to be amazing. Yes. 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 And amen. Well, thank you so much, Taylor, for taking the time to come on. I really appreciate it. I know people are going to be so encouraged by this. Um, tell everyone where they can find you, how they can follow you, all that good stuff. You're sweet. Thanks for having me. I love this. Um, I have a website, taylordukeswellness.com. I have tons of health articles and just practical things of where you can get started with your health. Um, I also have an Instagram account. Taylor Dukes Wellness and yeah yes I follow her on Instagram follow her Taylor Dukes Wellness and yeah you're great she's a great follow lots of good practical tips too (laughs) so thank you so much thank you